Let's have a look at a very important feature of Langchain called Output Parsers. With Output Parsers, we are able to control the structure and format of the response being returned from the AI. When we invoke our chain, we can see the response being returned in this content field. And we can see that the content is returned as a string with some funny characters like this new line character over here. And even then, this is a concatenation between multiple strings. What output parsers allow us to do is to instruct the chain to take this response from the AI and then reformat it into a very specific way. This is important because in production applications, you might want to take the output from the AI and then pass it along to another system, which will expect the response to be in a specific way. Enough talk, let's have a look at this. In our project, let's create another file and let's call it output parsers.js. To save a bit of time, let's copy the code from this prompt template file and then move it to output parsers. And as a reminder, you can find the source code in this GitHub repository. Simply change the branch to lesson two and then copy the code from this prompt template file. In this video, we will cover a few of the most popular output parsers, but you can view a full list of parsers in the language chain documentation and you should find the parser for your specific use case. So let's just go through this code again. First we instantiate our model and then we create our prompt template and then we create a chain using this piping syntax. And then lastly we are invoking this chain and simply passing in the input as dog. And to test that this is working let's run it in the terminal by calling node and output parsers. And in the response, we get this AI message object back. And in the content field, we get a value that contains these new line characters. So let's use a parser to convert this to a string. The first thing we need to do is to import the output parser. So let's type import something from at langchain slash core slash output parsers. And the first parser we will have a look at is the string output parser. Now let's instantiate this parser just below the template by typing parser is equal to new string output parser and that's all we have to do for the parser. Now all we have to do is attach this parser to the chain and we can do that by adding dot pipe and then passing in the parser. This piping syntax might look a bit odd, but this is part of the Langchain expression language. And this is just a way to easily attach objects to a chain. The way we read this is the output from this object will be passed as input into this object. And then the output of this object will be passed into this object as input. Now let's run the script again. Now, instead of receiving that AI message object back, we are now simply getting the string. Right, let's have a look at a few more exciting examples. Let's say we wanted the model to generate a list of values and then return a JavaScript array as output. We can do that using the list parser. Because we will be having a look at a few parsers in this video, I just want to make this code a little bit more readable. So let's wrap the code for each parser in a function. So I'll just create a new function and let's call this call string output parser and let's simply wrap this code in this function like so. Then because we need to call await, let's simply add async to this function module and that will resolve the error. And let's also remove this const response and simply replace it with return. So what's going to happen is when we call this function, it will simply return the result of this chain. And then we can console log it down here. So let's define response and set that equal to await and call string output parser. Let's just run this again to make sure that it's still working. Great. Right, let's have a look at that list output parser. So let's create a new function called async function call list output parser. And let's write the code for this. So what we want to do here is we want to create a prompt and let's set our prompt equal to chat prompt template from template. And for the template, let's pass in provide five synonyms separated by commas for the following word. And let's add our word placeholder. Then let's create our output 
parser and let's set this equal to something that we need to import. So just after string output parser, let's now import the comma separated list output parser. And then we'll set output parser equal to new comma separated output parser like so. Let's create our chain by setting the chain equal to prompt dot pipe. In pipe, let's pass in the model and then also add dot pipe. And for this pipe, we'll attach our output parser. All we have to do now is return await chain dot invoke. And for the input, we'll pass in a word of happy. Right, so let's quickly have a look at this. We will pass in a word and the model will then generate five synonyms separated by commas. However, the response from the model will be a type string, which is not what we want. But instead, we want the response to be converted into a JavaScript array, which should be an object. So therefore, we are attaching this comma separated list output parser, which will take the string and convert it to an array. Let's test this. So down here, I'm just going to comment out this line. Let's create response, which is equal to await call list output parser and let's run this in the terminal and now what we can see in the terminal is that we are getting an array back with the different values and let me show you what would have happened if we did not include the output parser in this instance so in the terminal let's run this again and in the content we can see that we are only receiving a string and not a javascript array so let's add this back and hopefully you can already start to see the benefit of using output parsers to control the output. Now let's move on to another output parser that's extremely important for production use cases. And that is the structured output parser. With the structured output parser, we can convert the response into a JavaScript object. And for situations where you need to pass a JSON object to a service or another application, this is extremely important. And this is super easy to implement. So let's have a look at this. Let's create our function. Let's call it call structured parser and let's set things up. First, let's import the structured parser. And this parser actually comes from a different package, which we can import from langchain slash output parsers. And this is called the structured output parser. So in our function, let's first create our prompt. And for the prompt, let's set it to from template. And let's give this a value like extract information from the following phrase. And let's add the phrase placeholder. So what I want to do in this example is to pass in a phrase, like something that contains a name and the age of a person. And I want the model to extract the name and the age and then create a JSON-like object with a name and age property. Now, in order for the model to understand what information to extract, and to which properties the information should be assigned to, we also need to provide some formatting instructions. So we can already go ahead and provide this placeholder variable for the format instructions, like so. And let's also add some text like formatting instructions, like so. Let's also go ahead and create our output parser. By creating our variable output parser, let's set that equal to structured output parser dot and now we have a few options for creating this structure. And we will have a look at two of them. We will have a look at from names and descriptions and from Zod schema. If you have a very simple structure of individual fields, you can simply use from names and descriptions. But from Zod schema will allow us to create a structure that contains arrays. Let's first have a look at this from names and descriptions method. And this method takes in an object as input, and we can now define the structure of the object that we want the chain to return. In this example, we want it to return the name. And here we can provide a description of this field, like the name of the person. And we also want the age. So let's give a description like the age of the person. Right, let's go ahead and create our chain by assigning chain to prompt.pipe. Let's pass in the model and let's also pipe in 
the output parser, like so. Lastly, let's return await chain dot invoke and for invoke we need to pass two values the phrase let's set it to something like max is 30 years old and we also need to provide those formatting instructions which we can get from the output parser dot get format instructions great just to recap when we call this chain we will pass in this phrase max is 30 years old which will be passed into this prompt template. Then the output parser will take the structure that we defined over here and convert that into formatting instructions which the model will understand. And we will then pass those instructions into the prompt template as well. And hopefully when we run this, the name max will be assigned to this name property and age will be set to 30. Let's try this. Let's comment out this list output parser. Let's define response as await call structured parser and let's run this. In the terminal, let's run node output parsers. And indeed, the model was able to extract that information and the chain was able to convert that response into a JavaScript object. And if we have a look at the type of response, it should be a JavaScript object, which it is. This is extremely powerful, especially when you want the response of the AI to be passed into different processes in your application. If you want a slightly more advanced structure with nested structures and arrays, we can use the from zot schema method. This is also really easy to implement. And let's have a look at it. In order to use zot, we do need to install it. So in the terminal, let's run npm install zod now at the top of our code we can import zod so just below this line let's import z from zod like so let's also create a new function for this so just below this call structured parser function i'll write a new function which is an async function called call zod output parser and first let's create our prompt which is equal to chat prompt template dot from template and for this prompt i'm simply going to copy the prompt that we have up here because it will be the same we simply want the model to extract information based on a phrase and some formatting instructions let's also go ahead and assign our output parser to be equal to the structured output parser and on this we will now call a method called from zod schema and now in from zod schema we can call z dot object and now within object we can define the object that we want returned and in this example i'm going to pass in a phrase that contains the name of a meal as well as some of its ingredients and i want this object to contain firstly the name of the recipe as well as an array of the ingredients let's first set up recipe this is simply a string value so let's call z dot string and in order for the model to understand the meaning of this field we also need to add a description and let's call this name of recipe and this is how we can add individual properties to our object now for ingredients let's call z but this time it's of type array and the contents of this array will be of type z dot string like so and all we have to do now is add the description of this array which is simply ingredients we're almost done all we have to do now is create our chain by calling prompt dot pipe Let's add our model and let's also add our output parser to this chain. And lastly, let's return await chain dot invoke. And for invoke, we need to pass in the phrase. And in this case, it is something like the ingredients for a spaghetti bolognese recipe are tomatoes, minced beef, garlic, wine, and herbs. And lastly, let's also pass in the formatting instructions. And we can get these from our output parser dot get 
format instructions. And this should be all we need to do. Let's go ahead and test this. So let's comment out this. Let's create our new response, which is equal to await call zod output parser. And then let's run this in the terminal by running node output parsers. And in the response, we are getting a JavaScript object with a property called recipe which contains spaghetti bolognese, and we have a property called ingredients, which is a JavaScript array with all of the ingredients that we listed in our phrase. How awesome is that?